Welcome back to the Path to Zion podcast. We are rediscovering the ancient way, picking up part two of our present very short, presumably, series. It's ongoing right now. Who knows? Presumably, we'll have this part and we'll be done. If you didn't listen to part one or if you just need a little refresher, because who knows by the time you listen to this how much time will transpire. I am in beautiful northeast Georgia mountains. I'm roaming around the Panther Creek recreational area where this was my home. My wife and I lived here for 15 years. Right now, I'm walking right beside a beautiful stream that I used to wade for hours and hours, catching trout and praying and seeking the face of the Lord and saying, oh God, here I am. Send me. I don't even know what that means, but do something in my life. Reveal yourself to me. And so we're talking today about like the importance of every single moment for us individually and corporately speaking about seizing every opportunity to establish the, the, the part and the component within us in our lives to establish the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And specifically, we're talking about the condition of the church And basically asking the question, and perhaps we'll title it that, the church, (laughs) where is she? You know, perhaps we can say that, and and we can ask that question very appropriately in this hour. Um, I want to revisit just two things real quickly, and then we're going to move on and cover some things we did not in part one. But basically, we were talking a little bit in part one about what I propose is a possibility for you to chew on, is um, as I was having a conversation with um, a man yesterday asking the question, what do we do now? And he said, be consistent. Let's continue to preach the word. Let's continue to to love one another and, and prefer one another. Let's continue to study. Let's continue and be consistent. And And as I shared in part one, That is well and good until consistency, of course, means to carry on what you've been doing. It's great if we have had things in place that are good, right, pleasing, and what should continue on. But what I'm proposing in this message is, is the church in her vacancy of this hour, is she in fact being revealed as consistent in in her condition? I would say unequivocally yes. Why is the church disappeared? Where has she gone? Why are the gathering places, the the sacred assembly, natural buildings empty and locked? Perhaps she's being consistent. Perhaps she's not been home all along. That's what I'm proposing today. As As a thought, as a question I'm asking myself, it would seem that that is true. Is it possible that the church, the American church, the Christian American majority are consistent in the sense that it is now being revealed her true condition? So what is that? That's what I want to talk about with some clarity um, right here in this part of this series. Perhaps she's being exposed. Perhaps she is actually showing herself, the church, to be out in the open who she has been in the secret. Let me say that again. Perhaps the church at large, the the visible church, perhaps her, her, her present condition, what she has been already for years and years, generally deduced down to just mere church attendance and remaining very immature, perhaps her true condition has now come to light and has been unveiled, revealed in this hour of testing. And so perhaps I would put into your thoughts that maybe she's just not retreating and hiding with no influence with no voice, with no word of her mouth and of her testimony, perhaps she's just not had one. And it bears mentioning and repeating, even though I just said this in part one just moments ago, 
I have said for years that I am convinced that the Christian American majority boasts and, and declares out of her mouth that she deserves authority and that she has authority. She demands authority. She speaks as though she has authority, yet she has none. It's all hot air. It's all a facade. Why? Because it originates in self-identity, not in submission to the king of all kings who holds all authority in his name. Because the church walks in an individual-based identity of Christian American patriotism, self-centered thinking, blessing, favor, deservedness, instead of dependence, humility, and exaltation of God and saying, we are nothing without our Redeemer. We are nothing. We are reprobate, prideful, arrogant, rebellious ones redeemed by a gracious and merciful king and father. And he is our identity. He is our good. Forget my morality. Forget my Christian upbringing. Forget our Christian American heritage that I would argue all day long, but that is not at all what this is about. It's being revealed the condition that the church has been in, I would say, for many, many years. But now it's been given a circumstance, I believe, by the hand of the Lord to unveil her, to test her. We've talked about that all the time on this program, about the true understanding of the word tribulation, trials, testing. It is, it is simply a, a, an act executed by God to try us and see what's in there. It's, it's as simple as it sounds. We're going to peel back something and put you into a circumstance, and I'm just going to sit back, God the Father, and I'm just going to see how you do. And can we not say unequivocally, in the hand of the Lord coming the way it has to do that, by allowing these circumstances to come, go back and listen to the purpose within the pestilence study from months ago. The purpose is what? To unveil what I would say is the hidden lethargy of the church, among other things. It's complex. It's not about the American election. Now, that's for sure. Let's expand our thinking, people. Let's be spiritual men. So I would say, moving directly to our points here in part two. If we can be consistent in maturity, if we have for, for days, for weeks, for months, for perhaps years, been maturing men, going deeper into losing ourselves for the sake of the Messiah, and therefore finding ourselves, our very lives, if we've been on a trajectory of humility and repentance and repentance and repentance, studying, having encounters with the presence of the living God, sharing in the, in the community of, and fellowship of believers, the brethren, preferring others, serving others. If we've been doing that, then yes and amen, let's be consistent. Let's be consistent. But what I'm proposing today is that the church is being consistent to what she's been doing, which is very little of the things I just mentioned. Let's just be honest. This isn't, this isn't harsh, critical judgment in the sense of finger pointing. This is a body that I am a member of. And guess what? That gives me a voice to speak to her. It gives us a voice to rightly speak to a member of the body, the body at large, the corporate reality. If your finger is sick, do you just ignore it because, well, it's just my finger over here. This hand is fine. No. This finger over here needs healed. It needs repaired. For the good of the whole. It's infectious. 
it can affect the whole. So therefore, we are all equally responsible in humility, in temperance, and self-control to address the body as a whole that we are members within, underneath the head, Yeshua Messiah. So to me, the problem is we are seeing the consistency moving into this hour, revealing the lack and, and I'm trying to be gentle, <laughs> the, the not so great condition <laughs> of the church. She's not faring too well. I would say a lot of the Christian American church struggles with their allegiance. Am I a patriotic Christian, God and guns? Or am I a royal priesthood, chosen nation, with a sole primary allegiance to my king and an unseen yet kingdom? I think there's a 50-50 split within many people I've known throughout my life of their identity. And I would say, I would just propose, would you at least ask the question, is it possible that mere Christian American morality and allegiance to a nation and a flag and a government and to a republic has in any way divided your allegiance in your heart? Because, well, I want to, and we know what the Bible says, we have to be careful about honoring leaders, submitting to authority. I'm not throwing that out the window, but friends, we have to hold that in maturity. When things start coming against what opposes the laws of Yahweh God. We have to know that line in discernment as mature men. So for me, from my vantage point, this Christian national identity is actually a part of the problem. Because of identity and allegiance. Our identity is of utmost importance. Most people in the church don't understand anything about, I mean, truly, the grafted-in principle. I've been talking about that a lot this calendar year. We're just a wayward Gentile people that this God-man Jesus shed his blood because he was a compassionate guy, and now I'm in him because I know about the cross and I'm saved. But what about our identity? So mixed allegiance and a mixed identity, an an unsure and wavering identity. The third one I would propose is a problem with the present condition of the church that's being exposed in this hour is just sheer immaturity, unpreparedness. As that sister beside me said, haven't we been hearing these things for most of our lives, for those of us who have been in the church? Haven't we been hearing the warnings of what is to come? Yes, we have, but we have been slumbering and sleeping just like those who are actually beside Jesus in the natural. We've been sleeping. So we're immature and therefore we're also unprepared. That's why most, most Christians want to escape because of course that's easier. Do you prepare for anything that you know for certain in your, in your own mind you will not ever see? Of course not. Why would you? Why would you prepare your heart for something you will never endure anyway? I'm not going camping today, so I don't have camping gear in my truck. This is, this is, these are simple principles, friend. So therefore, without going any further and sticking to my points clearly, the church is immature and unprepared. We are not expecting to endure anything. So, to quickly continue moving, instead of going down each one of these paths as we could easily, fruit. Fruit of these issues I just presented. Mixed allegiance, no identity, partial at best, immaturity, unpreparedness to endure anything. So what is the fruit? 
I would say we're seeing the beginnings of the fruit right here, right now, the end of July 2020. I think there's already fruit on the tree. And as I say that, I would say perhaps the Lord is saying, there's fruit on the tree, Joel, because this tree has got deep roots. I'm standing beside a pine tree that is insanely tall. I mean, I'm no good, I'm no good at a judge of, of distance. This tree is at least six stories tall. This tree has been here a while. This tree did not just spring up today. This tree didn't spring up when COVID came. Do you hear what I'm saying? This tree has roots, and this tree already has fruits. The only thing that we need to discern in this hour is that right now, this tree has been unveiled. And the fruit of the tree, of what? Mixed allegiance, no identity, immaturity, and unpreparedness. I would say the fruit on the tree is we are deceived easily, church. We are easily led astray. This has been easy. And again, I'm not talking about kicking against authority. I'm not talking about going into a store without a mask on. I spoke on this the other day, lifting your chin high and strutting and saying, man, somebody just say one word to me. I am not saying that in any way, and I want to make that crystal clear. That is not in any way what I'm proposing. But the church at large, for the most part, seemingly has been deceived very, very easily in this hour. And what have they been told? Friends, let's just, let's just use the word of God. In measure now, not in the culmination of what's to come, because this is still yet before us, but in measure, in, in a beginning increment, I would say peace and safety. Peace and safety. Let's just all get along. Let's just all put on a mask. Let's just all never touch again, never talk again unless you're on a computer. Hey, man, safety, safety, safety. Number two, fruit on the tree that I would say again in this moment, the Lord is perhaps saying this, the roots go deep. Part of the fruit is the church is confused. She's confused. She's wavering. She's unsteady. She's movable. She's being tossed to and fro to use the scripture again. She's being moved about very, very easily. Hey, church, move out of the way. Just be still. Just, just, just go over there and get out of the way. We're just going to have our way. You just be silent. Again, I have to say this every single time to be clear. I am in no way saying to be a rebellious, militant people with guns locked and loaded saying, yeah, you come get me, and being an instigator. I am in no way proposing that. Again, here we are, every silly, oh my gosh, every episode I do, I feel like I'm saying, here is humanity's extremes. Passive, kick me, do whatever you want with me, or militant and violent. And I'm saying with clarity, I feel the Spirit is saying the people who can walk in maturity and discernment in that middle line will be the ones who see and know what to do and know how to respond rightly according to what the Spirit is saying. Because both of those are flesh-driven carnality. I'm afraid, so I'm just going to cower and disappear. Or I'm taking matters into my own hands. I've seen enough movies, I know how this goes, and both are fleshly, natural, carnal. Both. The spirit man walks the middle line, moved and blown about by the wind of the spirit and every word that proceeds from the mouth of God to speak to us what we should say and what we should do. I read that in Luke this morning, and I don't have my Bible with me right this second or I'd read it. So number three... As fruit of mixed allegiance, no identity, immaturity, and unpreparedness is removed from rightful influence. The church has been removed from rightful influence. You know, there was an age on this earth, it's been a while, where the church was who people went to 
for wisdom, for natural need, for help, for practical help, for instruction. Now, we've got to go way back. It wasn't 1776. <laughs> but there, and it wasn't 1950 when children are praying in schools. Friends, we've got to go back further. This isn't about this nation. This is not about America. That's too small. But part of this fruit from my vantage point is the church has been removed from rightful influence. Well, who am I? Who am I? I don't know what's going on. What do you think, brother? Who knows? I guess it'll all go away soon. And that's where the escapism mentality and doctrine really becomes very dangerous. Well, I just guess we're going to get zapped out of here tomorrow, so eh, whatever. I'm just going to stay locked down in my house. Wait it out. There's no rightful influence. Number four, fear. Retreat. Of course, directly related to being removed from rightful influence. The church is fearful and is making it very clear we will easily concede and retreat. I'm sorry. We don't know either. Man, I'm telling you, I stood, man, I walked these, these trails here years and years ago. When the, when the relevant message of the gospel was like hard and heavy. Relevancy, relevancy. Everybody was preaching relevancy my age. We've got to be relevant. We've got to be just like the world. We'll never win the world over. You know, early 2000s. If only we were relevant with our music, with our contemporary worship styles, with our light shows, with our smoke, with our Bible studies that are geared around Movies, if only we're relevant, we will win over the world. And friends, can I just say, how did that go? How did it go? Who won? Who won out? The world. The church has become fearful. No influence. And are retreating. So where is the church gone, friend? Where are you? I'm asking myself that. What about me, God? What am I to do? I am a sheep in a strange, strange land. Easy. I could easily be fearful. I could easily be afraid. Freaked out. Well, what are we going to do? And that's the message I'm working on that I need to get on the air this week about preparedness and balancing that rightly. But what do we do? Let's be consistent if, in fact, we have been consistently maturing as spiritual men. Yes and amen, continue that. But friends, if you're part of a church, and I don't mean a, don't see, you probably imagine a building of people, a membership. I'm not talking about that. If you are a member of a fellowship of believers, or even in your household, or even down specifically individual, if you are doing these things, friends, step back. And avail yourself to the Lord and say, God, help me. Help me. Help me to not. I'm not going to go back and read them all again. You heard them the first time. It's not an hour to retreat. It's not an hour to rise up and in a boastful, boisterous voice, demand to be heard. It's time to be men led by the Spirit of the living God and to rise up as spiritual men in this hour. So friends, be consistent if you're growing, if you're maturing. If you're living according to the commands and ways of Yahweh God, do that and do it more. 
But friends, if you are willing to sit down and hard, hardly analyze your life, and if you find flaws, if you find shortcomings, if you find disappointments, and you say, you know what, I am willing to say I'm not postured like that. I'm not ready to endure. I'm not ready. I'm saying that. Mature brothers that I'm, that I'm around are saying that, friend. Mature men are saying that. Why? Because it's true. We're not ready. We're not prepared. We are mixed in our allegiance. We, at the very least, are prone to waver and wander and be led astray. If you think that's impossible for you, friend, you're already down the road of deception way farther than you may even know. So please hear this instruction today. Give it a chance, please. Could it be true? Could it be true? Because I'm asking the, the, the question, church, where are you? Where are you? Man, give some thoughts. I'm looking at this huge tree again in closing. I'm looking at this massive tree, and I'm just saying, Lord, is that what you're saying? Is that what you're speaking in this hour? Is there is a large, large tree that has deep, deep roots, and the fruit is being revealed. The fruit's being revealed, man. The covers come off. And oh, man, I believe Yahweh's saying, that fruit stinks. That fruit is vile in my sight. I do not approve of what is being unveiled. So friends, there is a God full of mercy and full of compassion. And you know what he's in? He's in the uprooting business. He's in the business of removing the deep roots of our heart and of our lives to redeem his people and to bring us out in triumph. Man, that's what the message was at the church I was attending yesterday, man, talking about the biblical understanding of even the Roman army and the, the triumph. Oh, man, it's not something casual. It's not something that, like, eh, I didn't even notice it. I didn't see it, man. It was this huge procession of making an open display of your enemies in triumph and in victory. Friends, that's what we have been given the opportunity to enter into if we have not yet. And if we have, we can walk in that in greater measure and greater confidence through this hour and through this age. This is an age of trial. So church, where are you? Where are you, church? In my imagination right now, I, can, I am looking at the corporate body and I'm saying, where are you? Where are you? I'm looking at the world who doesn't know their left hand from the right and I'm saying, where is the church? I'm looking up to the Father. And I'm saying, oh, great King. Head. King Yeshua. Where is your church? Where is she? Let her be seen. Let her be seen. Let her be heard rightly. So may it be so. May it be so. And listen, it has to start in you. It has to start in me. So let it be. May the church, the, the remnant reality now, the remnant reality, may she rise up empowered by the Spirit of the living God and make herself known and make great the renown of Yahweh God Elohim. Amen. Visit us at pathtozion.com 24-7. Go to YouTube, search for Path to Zion Podcast, subscribe, add, follow, download the Podbean app. That's where you can find us. Follow these messages. Please share them. If you think this resonates with you in any way, please share this message with the church. Share it with your neighbors. Share it with your pastor, please. 
this message, I believe, has got to go out. I feel such conviction over the episodes over this last 10 days or so. Please consider, consider sharing on whatever platform you use and would prefer. Again, email us at pathdesignpodcast at gmail.com. I want to drive to where you live. I want to sit in your living room. I want to go to your assembly. I will sit with you and your mom. I don't care. I want to pray. I want to hear what the Lord is saying. I want to encourage and be encouraged. Please contact us if you are interested. We will do everything we can should the Lord say, yes, go to get to where you are in this hour. We need one another. Pathdesignpodcast at gmail.com is the way to reach out to us. Thank you for listening. Amen.